All right, everybody, we're gonna take a little break into the action because I'm joined right now by our very own Jude LaCava with uh, some really uh, big news that went down today with uh, Cardinals' very own Darnell Dockett. Yeah, this was big, Mike. I, I think when you look at impact players in the history of this franchise and you look at how this team was transformed from playing in Sun Devil Stadium to now the, the Denny Green era, the late Denny Green who passed away this past weekend, and to what the team is now. Darnell Dockett was a big part of that. I mean, he was drafted in 2004 as a third-round pick. Everybody thought he'd be a first-round pick. Quite frankly, he had some kind of issues off the field. Mm. He was outrageous. He was outlandish. But he brought an intensity and a toughness and a stick to itiveness to the football field instantly, and he played that way his entire career. And I think if you're looking at moments to remember the Super Bowl 43 against the Steelers, he tied Reggie White's and Willie Davis's record for three sacks wow. in the Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, that's a moment to remember. But, but I can't not mention the outrageousness of, of his tweets. I mean, he wanted a pet alligator, a pet tiger. He did a shower <laughs> scene on Twitter. He, he was uh, always goofing around, pushing the envelope. Some people were like, wow, that's way over the top. But nobody can deny this. He, he practiced with tremendous heart and effort. And he brought it every NFL Sunday to be, be one of the best defensive tackles in Cardinals history. It, that's amazing, yes. And you know what I loved about his story so much, even off the field, is he had to go through so many hurdles just to get where he was in, 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 um, in life. Man. In life. I, you know, think about this. And, and he talked about this. It was probably, you know, the week of the Super Bowl down in Tampa, it was one of the more profiled stories about Darnell's life and times. Now, he grows up on the East Coast in the Baltimore area, and his mom is murdered mm. when he's just 13. And then four months later, his dad passes away from cancer. So he's 13, 14 years old, and his uncle adopts him, kind of becomes his mentor, and he starts to play football. And football became his ticket. You know, he, yeah. even, say, he even said today, Mike, he goes, I beat the odds. I beat the odds. Mm. I, I, you know, I, I made it. I made it in the NFL. He's made millions of dollars. He's he has a ten-year-old son now, but he he grew up under the most extenuating of circumstances and figured out a way to use sports to get to the highest level, to get to a Super Bowl. And I, I've always admired him for that. Some people say, you know, he was tough. To, I never. He was always a good quote. He was one of those guys you go in the locker room and get a get good soundbite bite. when he was in in the right mood. And I always call it the many faces of Darnell because I think he had. He had a soft side, he had a tough side, he had a chip on his shoulder, but he was always, for the most part, a really good quote. And he was a leader by his toughness, his unrelenting effort on the football field and the practice field. And when you talk to coaches, he just was a guy that, you know, he just said, man, I, I'm out to prove that I belong. And he brought an intensity to his game. He would try to overpower opponents, and, and then he became a little better technician. Mm -hmm as he progressed in his career, and he made the Pro Bowl three times. But I, you're right. I mean, what he overcame in his personal life, the odds were stacked. He, he didn't have parents as a teenager, and football was his ticket, and it worked. And probably in many ways, the, the football was sort of his release as well, too. I mean, yeah, right, just kind of just kind of think about something else and put everything you got on the field. That, that's a great point. He even said it today. He said, how, he goes, I, I want you to know, I... I, I tried to, you know, I played tough. I, I would hurt people if I have to. It was a violent game. Mm -hmm. I'd bring it against opponents. He took out, you know, I've, I've heard this from players that have had tragedies in their life where they kind of transmute that, that, that tough road to the football field. And it's a violent game, and it's a form of expression with that violence. And Dockett did that, uh, and, and he did it as a leader of this team. He was outspoken. He could be rough to deal with at times. But nobody ever questioned his intent, um, especially when it came to an NFL Sunday game. He, he was a really uh, impressive, you know, I'd have to say when you look at defensive tackles, and I, I thought Eric Swan probably could have been a Hall of Famer had he had a little bit different situation. But of guys that I've covered um, throughout the 25, 26 years of this franchise, he's in that top three or four of the very best defensive tackles in franchise history without question. Wow, absolutely. And if you really, what was your probably, you know, you've interview, interviewed him so many times, what was probably maybe your one takeaway or one real solid memory that you have from interviewing him? I, I think it was his personal story. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he never, 
he never wanted to show the softer side. In other words, when I would talk to coaches, they would tell me, well, he's not easy to coach. And he, he wasn't easy to coach, but it was an interesting psychology. He didn't want to be, quote, a company guy, and he wanted to be this rough street guy, which he was, but he wanted to do it his way, and, and he kind of resented you know, some of the coaches early in his career, but he, but he played with great intensity, and then he refined his game. I, I think it was his personality. We knew when they played the 49ers, go to Darnell Dockett, and he's going to give you a great <laughs> quote on how he hates the Niners. Yeah, all right? yeah. Um, but, but keep in mind, Mike, this was part of a, a, a team, a franchise that was really struggling. And, and in 2004, you look at drafting Antro Roll, you know, you look at drafting Darnell Dockett, Larry Fitzgerald, um, Carlos Dansby, um, Denny Green, then would sign Kurt Warner. And, and little did we know back then that this would be the core of players that would take this team to a, to a Super Bowl against the Steelers in Super Bowl 43. So he was part of that transformation that allowed this team to, to be successful at University of Phoenix Stadium. Sure, sure. So that, you know, I, I think I'll look upon Darnell Dockett as that chapter that allowed the organization to become a destination instead mm -hmm. of a kind of a, a black hole sure where, where you know you know back in the in the mid 90s it was like you want to go to arizona are you kidding me yeah. they weren't even on the nfl map it was like the last stop yeah but but he transformed that and you know i i think he came in as a really physical tough guy from florida state he was a great player at florida state but then i thought okay he can't just you can't overpower players in the nfl you've got to learn technique and once he his rip technique was great. He was a, uh, a three technique. In other words, he played over the outside shoulder of the guard in between the tackle. And I think early on in his career, a lot of his sacks came from other players pressuring the quarterback. But he was very, very good against the run. He was a very physical player. He was a very tough player. He was a very durable player. Uh, I, I can't remember him missing any real significant amount of time in his entire career. I mean, when you play in the trenches for a decade and you're not, yeah. you know, on the, you know, you're not injured a lot and you're, you know, this guy was a tough cookie and um, he, he led by example in a very unique way. Definitely. And if you, like you were saying earlier, I think he was really at the beginning of the building blocks for the, for the Cardinals to have that big, resurgence in a, in a team. Yeah, and, and that all coincided with their move to Glendale and University of Phoenix Stadium, and, and it also coincided with, with Denny Green's ability to draft. He, Denny Green would always say, I, I like to go to the big programs, and he would go to Florida State and, and take on a guy like Darnell Dockett, and he'd go to University of Miami and draft an Antrell role, and, and, and he, he looked at impact guys at the highest conference level in college football that would translate to, to what he wanted. Now, Wizenhut came along, and, I, and I, I think, you know, when you look at what Ken was able to do in making the decision to go away from Matt Leonard and, and, and go with Kurt Warner um, late in his career, that, that was transformative. But I, I think the other thing that's interesting is that Darnell was a guy that also pushed the envelope. There, there's no denying, and you know in your expertise of social media, mm -hmm. he did some outrageous things. Oh, I mean, absolutely. He, he made national news with some of his... I mean, crazy tweets. But I think he fed off that, right? He I mean, did. he wanted he to see that. He wanted to be yeah. that edgy guy. He wanted to shake it up. You know, hey, man, he would say, I just, well, I'm just being me. You know? Yeah, would, yeah. But, but, and he, he put it out there, and at times it was over the top and over the line. Even remarked today with the PR director, Mark Dalton, saying, hey, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I can't tell you how many times Mark uh, would talk to me about my Twitter <laughs> yeah. account and reel it in a little bit. You know, he had PETA on him about wanting to have a pet tiger and a pet alligator, um, but but he was a he was a fun dude. If you look beyond the, the the tattoos and the edge, you saw a guy that loved football, that understood how football gave him a a, a life that that some people just dream about. Oh sure. And and now you know he's 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 a, he's a dad that that's proud of his ten year old son. And uh, you know he what I thought was also very poignant today is Bruce Arians said, look. You're part of the history of this franchise. You're always welcome here. You're a part of this. You'll always be here. And and then he turned to Arians and he said, yeah, but you're the guy that called the play that beat us in the Super Bowl. Arians at the time was the offensive coordinator of the Steelers sure. in that great catch by Santonio Holmes. Um, and, and, he, and he ribbed him. He says, man, I was that close to a, a Super Bowl ring, and he took it away from uh, me. But, you know, <laughs> it, it was fun to see. Sure. I, I, I think that when you start to look at where this franchise was when they arrived here, Mike, in the late 80s, now you have – 
notable players. You've got guys like Aeneas Williams in the in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You got guys like Darnell Dockett. You got guys like Kurt Warner who will get there eventually in the Ring of Honor. Uh, the great late great Pat Tillman. So. What I find interesting in the bigger picture is how this franchise that, that stumbled for many years mm -hmm. early on when they came to Arizona in the late 80s and most of the 90s, and then now they're developing a history and tradition. I remember that guy. I got his jersey. How about Kurt Warner? What yeah. about Pat Tell? You know, th so this is something that has created, as you know, one of the most passionate fan bases in the NFL. I mean, this Absolutely. is a Cardinals well, look, town now. Yeah, look at I mean, they have their own now feature on the, the all, 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 all or nothing, nothing all on or nothing. Amazon. Big hit. Big hit. And I mean, to, to think when they were playing at Sun Devil Stadium, you would have never thought they would have their own feature um, you know, show pretty much. You know, it's funny. I was talking to Larry Centers last year. And we, they were, Larry was part of the 90s when they really had some, some lousy teams. And he tells a story that he went to a 7-Eleven once. <laughs> Larry went into the 7-Eleven. He yeah. came out, and there were like four tickets to a Cardinals game on his windshield saying, I don't need these anymore. And he, he, the guy didn't uh. know it was Larry Centers, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. they were given tickets. He yeah. couldn't give tickets yeah, you away. Now you can't me. get tickets. No, yeah. I mean, it was that bad. I mean, they would go out and get fried on those aluminum seats yeah. at Sun Devil Ooh. Stadium. And, and that really tested fans. But now... They're by far the hottest ticket in this part of the country. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I respect. I, to me, though, I, you know, you asked me what's most impressive. Mm -hmm. It was. It's when he took the podium in Tampa, and he talked extensively about his life. And you know, I, I, yeah, I love the game, but I'm also fascinated on how do these, how do these guys get from point A to point yeah. B? Yeah. How do they? What did they overcome to get to the NFL? Because everyone has a story. Everyone yeah. has a story, and and there, there's a there's a ton of challenges in professional sports, and and I find I find his story to be one of the most challenging. And he found football, and it, and it, it took him on this unbelievable journey. Definitely, because I I find rarely in sports that someone's going to tell you yes on your first try. That's for sure. So you got to keep getting through those yes. no's. And, you know, so many people will get a no and they'll say, oh, that's it. That's I'm it. Done. I'm done. Right. But if you could just navigate through a no, yes. and then that's how we see these stories. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I think Dockett was a guy that, that no question had some off-field issues, but, but his talent, his ability to play hard, his ability to perform on the field allowed him to thrive for a decade. Uh, in a league that is all about what what can you do for me lately, and um, he had a great career, a very good career. I think the the question's going to be, is he a Ring of Honor candidate? And when you look at Ring of Honor, you think of Aeneas Williams, you think of Kurt Warner, you think of of some of the great players in the history. He's right on the cusp, and I I would have to say there's an argument to say based on his Super Bowl performance and the three Pro Bowls, he is a strong candidate. I I, I think Larry Centers deserves to be. Uh, in the Ring of Honor, his numbers are, are phenomenal. He's the number one pass catching running back in the history of the NFL. Um, I think when you look at certainly uh, Kurt Warner is there, but I think Darnell, as time goes on, will be a, a strong consideration for the Cardinals franchise Ring of Honor. Definitely, and that that'll be great to see then too. Absolutely, kind of, kind of full circle, really. Yes, it is. I mean, it's an amazing story and. Uh, isn't it interesting that we're just a few days away from training camp, and I, I can't tell you how many fans are just like you know foaming at the mouth, saying, "Oh man, they're back!" You yeah, know? yeah, it's coming. It, it, there's a tremendous amount of interest and uh, and a ton of uh, interesting stories going into camp. They'll report Thursday. Uh, they'll have their their conditioning workout, and then they'll start practicing this coming weekend. That's great, and we'll check on uh, with you guys uh, during sure. camp, and that'll Absolutely, be fun. We'll get man. some uh, live shots there as well. That'd Look be great. Look forward to it, and we we invite any questions, uh, specific questions about what's happening and with contracts. And we, I, I think the Tyron Matthew contract is is I think it's going to get done. It may not get done by the end of this week, but I expect it to get done in the next week or two. Uh, his extension. We'll look at how some of the injured players are returning, and uh, we'll, we'll get a really good view of this, and we, we'll be on news now quite a bit to uh, to give you what you, you guys want, and that is the latest information and insight on the Cardinals. Yeah, you got to get that insight because we are almost there. Man, that's it's hard to be fun. Yeah, be that's great. Fun. Well, thank you so much, Jude. We'll Mike, uh, check in with you it. later in the week. You got it, man. Great.